I'm using the cover to try to get out of the nose. Here we go. What up, Jet Team? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Ryan. I'm a former F-15 E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and commercial pilot. And someone on Instagram asked me to break down some more DCS dogfight, so ask and you shall receive, my friend. Today we're gonna be breaking down Russia versus America. We're gonna see who comes out on the top. Just a little friendly competition, should be a lot of fun. And say to the very end of this video, because at the end, I'm gonna give my thoughts on the different mindsets between a Russian and American pilot going into a dogfight, so you're not gonna wanna miss that. Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button, maybe even subscribe. Every time you do that, the pilot somewhere gets their wings. <laughs> Let's dive in. So I don't actually know what I'm about to fight. Um, I have come in the Russian MiG-29. As you guys know, I've really been enjoying the MiG-29. We'll change it up for the next round, um, but let's see what we're gonna merge with. I hope it's like a Hornet or something or Maybe an F-15. All right, guys, so here we go. We're flying along with Growling Sidewinder. If you haven't already, pop over there, follow his channel. Great stuff. I really like the fact that they're diving into these dogfights without knowing what they're up against because that keeps you sharp, keeps you on your toes as a fighter pilot. The one thing we would do though when we were operating in certain areas around the world is we would know that there's probably two to maybe three max jets that you could encounter in that part of the world. So we would really hone in on those three and we wouldn't really go too much outside of that because we really wanted to know how to identify those three and then how to fight those three. So we'd hone in and typically you can know, you know, there's gonna be roughly three in that geographical area that you'll actually fight against. But for this, I really like the spontaneity. Well played, sir. That's an F-22. Okay, fantastic. Of course. Now, luckily for me, he gave me a bit of vertical turning room and I can maybe get these. God, I thought I I think it's surprising that he's that excited that it's an F-22. <laughs> that means uh, he's a great pilot and he's confident in the jet he's flying, flying this MiG-29. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Get rounds on. He, I think he was a little surprised by how low I was in that merge. All right, so this is a classic thing that happens to some pilots is you get fixated on which way you're going to go during the merge. So with the MiG-29 that far below you, if you do what this F-22 is doing right here, you just open up your six o'clock and you're like, hey man, shoot me, kill me. Let's do this. You know, so you need to be on your toes and you need to be able to adapt based on where that jet is. If they're determined to hug the earth and do map of the earth all the way into the merge, you are gonna to wanna to build some distance on the way in, and then your lead turn needs to be down. So if this F-22 did a lead turn down right now, which it has plenty of airspace to square that corner, it's gonna put its nose right on this MiG-29, and good night. <laughs> But instead, he's opening himself up to these gunshots right here. So this wouldn't have been happening if the F-22 would have gone down. And uh, he went for the vertical, gave me a lot of space, kind of a Syrian lead turn, um, which almost got him killed. I'm still in a good position. So not quite a Syrian lead turn, just a lead turn in the wrong direction. So misdirected lead turn is what I would call that. And if I was teaching a student right now, I would say, where'd you have the first opportunity for a kill? And if they didn't notice that it was that lead turn, then we would need to stop and I would need to break it down and show them like, look at the distance between you two. So I'm assuming at the merge, these came in with at least 6,000 feet of distance in between them. And then the F-22 goes up and creates about 8,000 feet of distance toward the MiG-29 can just point at them. However, if the F-22 rolled inverted, pulled, then they're gonna close that distance to probably somewhere around 3,000 to 2,000 feet. They're gonna be perfectly saddled up, ready for either the Fox 2 or a gunshot. So again, it's determining what the student notices. That depends on what I'm gonna debrief. Position here. Can I possibly kill this thing? I'm feeling pretty good about this, but this is the thing, man. You don't, you know, you merge with whatever shows up. You don't get to do this, you know, oh, it's not fair. 
whatever shows up, that's what you're dogfighting. Like, and that's something that we would do a red flag. We do different engagements where we didn't know for sure what we were going to see on the red side. It just keeps you on your toes, keeps things a little bit spicy. Who doesn't like a little bit spicy? Like, you know what I mean? Like these comments almost got, almost got nose on. Uh, the comments where it's like, that's not fair. You shouldn't dogfight the JF-17 with the F-22. No, man, you dogfight whatever shows up. You know, you don't get to stop the fight and be like, yeah, excuse me, Mr. F-22, it's not fair. You know, I'm a MiG-29. By the way, I'm outrating this F-22 right now, it looks like. Am I outrating him? Could it be possible? He's tightening down the turn. I couldn't get enough lead, and he's going to reverse this into the one circle. Okay, fantastic. There's the F-22 we all know and love. So doing that maneuver over the top, that's where the F-22 really makes its money. And he wasn't really outrating it before. The F-22 just wasn't tightening down their turn. They could have put the nose on way sooner uh, prior to that. I can still win this. I've been in a good position most of this fight, honestly, because he messed up the merch. But that is not, that's where you don't want to be against the F-22. It's right here. Ow. Great. That's it, man. You mess up for one second against the F-22 and that thing just flips it over and kills you. All right, so there's that first round. I really like how the MiG-29 pilot just kept fighting, kept flying the jet, and you basically keep going until you land. That's the rule when it comes to dogfighting. And the big thing I liked about the F-22 is finally they used fifth gen tactics. They were kind of just doing what was called a pig in space where they're just kind of floating out in front of the MiG-29, giving him a few shots, especially at the very beginning. But then ultimately the F-22 starts executing those over the top spinning leaf type maneuvers, which are fifth gen classic maneuvers and it works out for him. So there's round one, let's move on to round two. All right, he's in the Su-33. That's a real nice Russian Soviet aircraft. I mean, it's a variant of the Su-27. They essentially took the Su-27, they put bigger wings on it and they put canards on it so that it can have slower flight characteristics and be more maneuverable at slower speeds. The Su-33 is used on carriers, so that's the main reason for that. But think about like an F-18. The F-18's slow speed maneuverability is incredible. I mean, when you see the Blue Angels flying around super tight together, they're not moving extremely fast across the ground, but they're really able to kind of hover in position there right next to each other because of the flight control system's ability to operate that aircraft at a slower speed. So that's gonna be very advantageous in a dogfight for the Su-33. So that's why the Su-33 can do things like the Cobra maneuver relatively well, is it's just got those big barn door wings on the back and the canards up front that help it do that. Now, the downside is if you stall this thing, there's a chance you might not be able to recover it because essentially you need to pitch the nose down. So it does have some things on the back of the wings that help to pitch it down. But since it's sort of got that delta wing configuration, it can get tricky if you get really slow close to the ground. So that's something you gotta watch out for. All right, let's see how the dog fight goes and let's see what he's fighting. So it better not be an F-22 again. I'm gonna be very upset. There we go, got it locked. What is this, what is this? What is this? That's an F-15. Yeah, that's just a normal F-15. Just a normal F-15? Come on, man, F-15s are the, the best jet out there. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit biased. All right, he has gone into the vertical. I'm going with him. I have a lot of energy, so I'd love to convert that into altitude, which is what we're doing here. 
That's a real good call there. So your energy is created by a few different things, airspeed and altitude, and you can trade one for the other. So if you trade your airspeed for altitude, that means you're gonna go up and you're gonna have potential energy underneath you. Now, if you cash in that potential energy, you point your nose down, your airspeed's gonna increase. So theoretically, you could, tip, you could basically do a figure eight in the sky if you flew the jet perfectly and maintained energy. But when it comes down to dogfights, it's all about who's got more finesse and ability to understand that energy and cash it in at the right times and then gain it at the right times. Because if you're just sitting there trying to cash in the entire time, point your nose, point your nose, you're impatient, you destroy all your energy. And if you do that at low altitude, now you don't have any altitude left to regain that energy. And that's called the shoot me, kill me zone. When you cash in your energy right at the floor, because all you can do is essentially jink in game and then eject, you know, once you see that final missile coming at you. So I like that comparison there. Let's dive back in. Maybe try to get a vertical fight going because he seems like he pulled pretty hard. Although you got to be careful with that F-15 nose. We've seen uh, how unpredictably the F-15 can point that nose in a one circle fight. And the nice thing about the F-15 nose is the gun is canted up two degrees. So it's great for dog fighting. You don't have to put your nose in lead on the other jet and then shoot. The jet is essentially pulling lead for you the entire time, which is a really cool advantage. I'm gonna reverse into a one circle here against them. Using the clouds here. Now, when you're in training, you don't fly in the clouds. That's called a training rule violation. But when you're in combat, could use them to your advantage. So if you know you're gonna go into a cloud and then you're, you can see where you're gonna pop out of, it's essentially like dropping a smoke bomb. I mean, it's a tactic that could be used for sure. And see if we can just get this nose on, please, yes. There we go, I hit his wingtip. Yes, I did. So being aggressive, is a really big payoff when it comes to flying jets sometimes. Cause you might only have a high angle gunshot like what we're watching right now. And he clips the wing of that F-15 and that F-15 is gonna keep flying, I guarantee it, just because the flight control systems in it are so strong. But it's not gonna be maneuvering like it should for a dogfight. For the most part anyway. And now he's in trouble. But he's not flying correctly as you can tell. It's basically just a matter of finishing the job here. Well, F-15s can fly without a wing. I mean, it's been done before. There's been an Israeli F-15 that had a mid-air collision and it kept flying with one wing, but it's not gonna be able to dogfight in the true sense of dogfighting, but it could lob a AMRAAM or a FOX-2 for sure. But, you know, as far as defense and doing like a jink or something like that, the fire is just gonna end up getting worse, especially once it catches the fuel tank in the wing. It looked pretty cool from his perspective. He Minimum definitely thought speed. he had me there. So that's a nice execution of the Cobra maneuver to maintain distance. And that can be something that the Cobra does. It basically just keeps you from overshooting and you aggressively pull back, execute that Cobra. So that was real nice from the Su-33 pilot's perspective. Minimum speed. That tends to be the best use for the Minimum Cobras. Minimum speed. Is, you know, just getting some extra angles. Almost hit them there. A couple of extra angles missing, uh, you know, for, for the Fox 2 shot, things like that, missing angles or getting into a defensive posture, pulling behind a bandit's nose. This is the kind of stuff that a Cobra might be useful for at times. Finally hit his tail or his engine. I would submit that is essentially 90% of the time what you're going to use the Cobra for is you make some sort of a mistake in dogfighting and then you stop it. You stop your energy from moving you forward into a position where you might get shot. I mean, being right in front of someone, executing the Cobra and then shooting them could happen, but that would take some really weird rules of engagement where the jet behind you isn't shooting you. They're just kind of like, okay, waiting for confirmation from headquarters. Come on, headquarters, I'm trying to shoot this guy. And then headquarters is like, sorry, we're running the numbers through Congress. We've got to decide if this is a legal action. And you're just sitting there like, all right. And then all of a sudden, boom, they execute the Cobra maneuver and then shoot you. So again, very rare that that could happen, but 
I, I guess in that situation I just talked about, it could, but more likely the Cobra is gonna be used to save you from a BFM, a basic fighter maneuver mistake that you made. Let's continue. Or his engine, left engine it looks like. And look at that F-15 damage model, dude, come on. Hit him again and again. I mean, how is that thing flying at this point? So the Su-33 is actually shooting a 30 millimeter gun. And I think they only have like 200 rounds or something like that. Uh, but it's essentially going to put less out there that to hit them, but it's going to be more damage if it does hit them. So yeah, in this case, I think probably that a 15 would have been toast by now. Finally, there we go. So there you go, guys. There's the Su-33 versus the F-15. Again, pretty even match in my opinion. And you just got to be weary of those aggressive shots. You got to respect those. So for the F-15, if they would have gotten out of plane when they saw the Su-33 put their nose on them, if you would have just kind of checked to one side or the other, they're going to get out of plane and be less of a target for that high angle gunshot. Let's dive into the next round. It adds that little bit of pucker factor, I feel like, which I, I enjoy into the Merch here against what looks like an F. -tone. Okay, looks like he is in a Su-27 from what I can tell, just like a little bit of a smaller HUD, tighter package, smaller cockpit, uh, probably a little bit older of a plane than the Su-33 as well. Let's dive back in. Looks like an F-22 again, fantastic. Fantastic. That's great news. Please cross my nose, dude. Oh my God. Oh my God, I almost killed an F-22 probably going to be your one shot are these high angle gunshots if you're fighting against a good f-22 pilot who's going in to get the visual on you if you're able to do that that's probably your one shot at this fifth gen kind of like how maverick takes out the su-57s let's continue with the su-27 try to roll over on top of him here could it be possible could it be possible i just don't have enough airspeed to point the nose i use the cobra there and I still missed. So he just cashed in everything. Not a lot of airspeed, less altitude, cashed it in, which I don't think is a terrible move. Because honestly, if you're a fourth gen pilot going going against a fifth gen jet, I mean, you're you know you're saying goodbye to your your kids. You're saying goodbye to everybody as you're in this dogfight because you know it could be bad. I still missed. That was luck. Oh my God! Look at him roll. Oh, oh, F-22. I'm using the Cobra to try to get out of the nose. Ooh, that's a nice shot right there. That's basically the back of the fuselage. Minimum speed. All right, he hit me pretty bad there. I've lost radar and a bunch of other things. And if you're flying with HEI, high explosive incendiary rounds like that F-22 is going to be flying with in combat and you hit the fuselage of this Su-27, it's going to go inside and go and it's going to be like a little mini bomb going off. So I think that gunshot would have essentially ripped the Su-27 in half if it was in fact HEI, high explosive incendiary rounds. But he's still fighting, which I like. You know, the Su-27 is like, hey man, I'm not giving up which is, that's what you got to do. Nice high gunshot there from the F-22. I mean, you got to take those shots. I think as the F-22, you probably have more of an ability to wait until you're in a better position than that. But I get it, you know, taking those shots sometimes might be your, your one, the one shot you got. Now it's going to get down to the floor, which is, that's where all dogfights are going to get down to. So watching it down here at the floor, you know, basically this F-22 needs to just drive to the turn circle of the Su-27 and then turn with him and take some last minute shots. There we go. Okay. So the F-22 is making it a sporting match, which I like, sticking with the guns. And then the Su-27 pilot ejects inverted, which a lot of these ejection seat guys, they have rocket motors that first blast you out and they have a second variable nozzle rocket that can turn and put you right side up based on different gyros that are inside the seat. So that's what saved that Su-27 pilot's life there. But yeah, ultimately interesting dogfight. I would love to try flying the Su-27 someday to see the maneuverability that it has, but well played Raptor, well played. Struggling to get the lock here. 
Okay, here we are for the final round. I believe he's back in the Su-33. Good luck. Uh, that is an F-15. That's the NASA F-15, STOL. The Maneuver Thrust Demonstrator. And he was way into the vertical. I got a lot of turning room on him there. And he's in trouble. He is in very big trouble here. Almost had him there. And he's trying to climb over me. I gotta use the rudders here. I can line this up and wrap it up right here. Okay, so using the rudders to line it up, it's actually a really good technique. However, it's gonna cost you a lot of energy. So as we're progressing through this dogfight here, that was a nice place to use the rudders because he was up high. And then he's able to tuck it in underneath that jet and get the kill. But that's one of the moves I would really like to use in the F-15E was pulling up like we're seeing right now. And then you wait until that jet falls off. And as soon as they fall off like that, you just tuck it in behind them and then continue the dogfight. But if you can basically come to a standstill going straight up and you're just kind of going up as much as you can, keeping yourself balanced. And then when that jet falls off, use the rudders to turn down and pull in behind them. It's just like you would be fighting a fight level like this it's just turned into the vertical and straight down so that was real nice i love the use of the rudders and a lot of fighter pilots will say keep your feet fat on the floor yeah mr fat feet <laughs> keep your feet flat on the floor is what they would say because a lot of people aren't used to using the rudders but for me i always try to use the rudders it was just more fun gave you more options in a dog fight like that and now you made it to the end of the video, guys, and I'm a man of my word, so I wanna tell you what I think the main difference is between Russian pilots and American pilots. So when it comes to Russian pilots, this is coming directly from some people that I've talked to who've had interaction with Russian pilots. They do not practice defensive fighting. They say, well, I'll just, I won't become defensive. And a lot of them are ground controlled, so radars are directing them where to go. They're they think they have situational awareness on everything going on around them. But essentially what's going to happen is eventually you will get defensive. Someone will make a mistake. So if you don't train to being defensive and being able to jink from a gunshot or get out of plane, it's going to be a bad day. So for my money, I'd put my money on American pilots any day of the week. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but when you don't train for the worst case scenario, when you don't train to be defensive, you put yourself in a position where being arrogant kind of takes over and you think no one will ever be behind you. And I tell you what, I've been in front of so many different aircraft because of a mistake I made, but then I got better because I realized, oh, okay, they got behind me because I did this and I can get back behind them if I do this. And it's this step-by-step -step process, problem-solving process that just makes you a better fighter pilot. So the fact that Americans and NATO forces trained to that gives us a huge advantage over these Russian counterparts. At the end of the day, it's like two nights jousting. I would love to try it sometime. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video and this breakdown, let me know. Again, thanks to Growling Sidewinder for letting me break this down. Super fun. And I will see you guys on DCS one of these days soon. I'm working on getting my system all set up right now. So hit me up on Instagram if you have any thoughts on what I should do for my first DCS dogfight. I'm probably going to grab the F-15E. I might do the F-16. I know the F-15E is coming out soon. But most of all, guys, thanks so much for being here. Before you go, if you would, just <laughs> dominate that like button. Maybe even subscribe. Every time you do that, you create a mini sonic boom. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> thanks so much for being here, guys. Most of all, have a great day.